The biggest debate for NBA fans over the past decade has been Jordan versus LeBron, and virtually everyone, players, coaches, and fans have given their take and opinion on the two players. And one guy who's always in LeBron James' corner is indeed Kendrick Perkins. And today, once again, we're listening to Big Perk give his opinion on Jordan versus LeBron and debunk all of his points. When it comes down to the GOAT conversation, and no disrespect to MJ, because I got J's on my feet right now. But come on now, this conversation is dead. It's LeBron James, and we already know. I'm not even about to get into the history, and when we get to talking about pressure and no other athlete in, in history of sports has had the pressure of LeBron James and lived up to it, we're not going to even dive into that. See, what happened, Christine Nears, is this. Mm -hmm. I've been working on my vocabulary this year, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to enhance, you know what I'm saying, working okay. on my craft a little bit. And I came up with a word, synonymous. You know what that mean? Okay. Meaning one in the same. Mm -hmm. That's what the NBA and LeBron James is. One in the same. LeBron James is the NBA, and the NBA is LeBron James. And it's point blank, period. There's no other way around it. So stopping Perkins right there already, he is stumbling out of the starting gate. As his first mistake was admitting live on TV he is wearing Air Jordan shoes, then proceeding to say LeBron James is the face of the NBA and synonymous with the league. Now, don't get me wrong, LeBron James, he's done wonders for the NBA and has had a huge impact in growing the game. But in terms of marketability, popularity, and the growth of basketball, Michael Jordan was leaps and bounds better. As back in the 90s, he was the first global NBA superstar who was marketed worldwide. Whether it be with Gatorade, Old Spice, Hanes, Space Jam the Movie, The Good One, or even Nike. And looking at the Jordan era in the 90s, the NBA at that point was the peak of its popularity and everyone wanted to be like Mike. And looking at 92, the Dream Team, which Jordan was the headliner for, had an immense impact in the NBA going global and inspiring future stars like Dirk Nowitzki, Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, and countless other players. And if you want to talk tangible impact, something you can measure, look at the NBA Finals and how impactful Jordan was to the ratings. As in NBA history, five of the six highest rated finals came from Michael Jordan and his Bulls. Also important to note, in 98, he had the most watched game in NBA history and 93, the second most watched game of all time. Compared to LeBron James, who is responsible for the three least watched games in finals history. And looking for an entire series, LeBron once again is in the bottom three twice. And going full circle with this point, Kendrick Perkins is wearing Air Jordan shoes in 2023. Once again showing Jordan had a way bigger impact on the game, the culture, popularity, and marketability than someone like LeBron. As to this day, he outsells LeBron by over $100 million in sneaker sales. When you talk about accolades, check, check, check. When you talk about longevity, check. When you talk about having the greatest career of all time, Check. And again, I know Stephen A is going to come up here talking about he went to six finals and won all six, six finals MVP. Good for him. Now, stopping Perkins right there, he was kind of sneaking the way he did it. But in that clip, he wasn't comparing LeBron versus Jordan. He was comparing LeBron to his own checklist with no context in reference to Jordan. And looking at his worst point, he says LeBron James, quote unquote, has the greatest career of all time. Objectively speaking, this is 100% not true. What I would say is LeBron James has the best longevity, the best total numbers, and sustained greatness. And compared to Jordan, LeBron's longevity supersedes him and every player in NBA history. Now, with that point out of the way in the added context, I'm talking about the greatest career, Looking at someone like Jordan, what he accomplished at his peak in his era is simply unmatched. And compared to LeBron James, the overall gap in resume is still gigantic. Trailing Jordan by two championships, two final MPs, one defensive player year, one MVP, four defensive teams, nine scoring titles, 
and three steals titles. That gap right there in resume I would describe as a Grand Canyon size gap. For comparison, the overall gap in accomplishments between Jordan and LeBron, I would say is better than Kevin Durant's entire resume. And KD in his own right is no slouch, being a top 15 player and a first ballot Hall of Famer. My overall point being, having nice stats, great longevity, on paper looks amazing. But if you want to talk tangible accomplishments, LeBron still is lacking in comparison to Mike. Kudos to Mike. But again, I keep telling y'all, this is not an individual sport. This is not boxing. This is not golf. This is not tennis. Championships help your legacy in basketball, but it does not define your legacy when it comes down to a team sport because you could do all you possibly can, and it's just the others didn't live up to the hype. This right here from Perkins is an annoying tactic that is downright disingenuous. As looking at championships, the greatest accomplishment you can have when a player wins that, their legacy undoubtedly takes a gigantic leap. And for someone like Jordan, if he had zero rings, he would be nowhere near the greatest player in NBA history. The same goes for Kobe, Kareem, Larry Bird, Magic, and any player you want to talk about. And looking past that, when it comes to Perkins, he is a massive hypocrite on this front. As less than a year ago, he claimed Steph Curry getting a championship and a Finals MVP would undoubtedly make him a top 10 player in NBA history. And right now, if he goes on to win a championship and adds a Finals MVP to his resume, he's going to bump Magic Johnson out and going to be sitting right there with the greats on Mount Rushmore. Isn't it pretty funny how one championship for Steph Curry makes him a top 10 player of all time? But for Jordan, winning six championships, never losing the finals, well, that's just something on the resume. Maybe it matters, maybe it doesn't. Eh, who really cares about that? I hope this right here exposed Perkins as a massive hypocrite with huge double standards depending on the player or even the debate when it comes down to a team sport because you could do all you possibly can and it's just the others didn't live up to the hype. So when it comes down to the GOAT conversation and we're about a week away or a little less a week away than LeBron James being the all-time leading scorer in NBA history, I think this conversation is dead. Now stopping Perkins right there once again, when it comes to LeBron James when he loses, there's always an excuse, a caveat, and even an asterisk. And for a player to debate Jordan vs. LeBron, what you have to do is devalue championships so much they really don't even matter. And pointing out one of Perkins' many double standards, when it comes to LeBron James making eight straight finals, that achievement is viewed as an individual accomplishment. But for Jordan, actually winning six championships is downplayed and viewed solely as a team accomplishment. And when it comes to LeBron James fans, blaming teammates is always one of their go-to moves. But for LeBron, in his career, he's had plenty of help, left teams, gone to teams, built big threes, destroyed big threes, and even rebuilt big threes. As in his career, he's had Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, Kyrie, Kevin Love, Westbrook, Anthony Davis, Mo Williams, even Big Z, as all-star teammates. Compared to Jordan, whose only all-star teammate ever was Scottie Pippen. And unlike LeBron James, he didn't leave Pip to create a big three and a super team. Now, speaking of big threes, when LeBron went to South Beach in his first year, he did something Jordan never did. He lost in the finals, scored eight points in a game, and averaged 17 for a series. When you see Kendrick Perkins say teammates LeBron James, quote unquote, didn't do enough, sometimes that is true. But in this series, LeBron James was the sole reason the Heat lost first to Mavericks. For Jordan, in any playoff series, the finals or not, you can never point to him as the reason his team lost. And going one step further, some of LeBron's big time chokes in 08 vs Boston, the first six games of that series, he was absolutely terrible, averaging 24 points, 6 turnovers on 33-21, and 76 splits. In 2010, once again versus Boston, 
after being up 2-1, LeBron's Cavs lost three straight games. In those games, he averaged 21 points, six turnovers on 34-15, and 74 splits. Looking at 08, 2010, 2011, in those series LeBron James was absolutely awful, and his teammates were not the reason they lost those series. And I know one response I'll get is that, well, Jordan, he lost first to Pistons. He got beat down. Well, that is true. Jordan, three straight years, lost to Detroit. But in all those series, Jordan was never as bad as LeBron James in those three series. As collectively versus the Pistons, he averaged 30 points on 48% shooting. Even looking at 95, one of Jordan's bigger chokes, for the entire series, he was pretty damn good averaging 31 points on 48% shooting. My overall point being, Jordan in his career individually never had as bad a series as LeBron James in 2011, 2010, 08, or even 07. That's it, this is not football. Again, this is the game of basketball. And don't even get me started when it comes down to enhancing and improving your game every single season. You know why LeBron James is able to average 30 right now at the age of 38? You know why? Because do he still have the explosiveness to beat somebody off the first step like he did, you know, five or maybe 10 years ago? No, but it's still there. But you know what he got? He got a consistent three point shot. And he's a far better three point shooter than Michael Jordan. This, the stat shows it. So, stopping Perkins right there on multiple fronts, he once again shows he does not know basketball or watch the game, as LeBron this year is only shooting 31% from three. And despite that, he is averaging 30 points at age 38. And why he's doing that? Because at age 38, he's still dominant in the paint, the post, and the fast break can get buckets at his own pace. Now, when it comes to shooting and three-point shooting, LeBron and Jordan really are pretty close. LeBron is a higher volume, but Jordan most of the time has a higher percentage. As looking at the NBA playoffs, LeBron James, for his career, shoots 33.7%. Compared to Jordan, in the non-shortened years, shot 35.2%. Looking at the NBA finals, LeBron James shot 35.2%, compared to Jordan, who shot 36.8%. is pretty funny, Kendrick Perkins, when he cites actual stats and numbers, he either gets them wrong entirely or misinterprets them into his own weird narrative. There is yeah. no question. There yeah. is no question. There is MJ and yeah. then there's LeBron. Yeah. Period. Hey, now you're going to mount much more I'm glad, I'm, be happy I'm glad, with that. I'm glad, I'm glad he was cooking Thunder, da uh, Thunder Dan and, Je and Jeff Hornacek. So Perkins in this debate has been cooked and his last resort is downplaying MJ, his era, and his competition. And I'm not going to go super in-depth, but looking at the teams MJ played, they're far from bums. As Lakers 91 were a top 5 defense and offense, they had Magic, James Worthy, Vlade Divac, Byron Scott, and Jordan in that series averaged 30-11-7 while guarding the greatest point guard in NBA history. Looking at the Blazers, they were absolutely loaded. They had Clyde Drexler, who finished second MVP voting, Terry Porter, an All-Star, Buck Williams, an All-Defensive player, Kevin Duckworth, a two-time All-Star, and Cliff Robinson, a two-time All-Defensive player. And compared to the entire NBA, they were fourth in scoring and third in defensive rating. Looking at the Sonics, they were an absolute force on both ends of the court, winning 64 games and being second in defensive rating as well as scoring. They had GP, Sean Kemp, Detlef Shrimp, and two snipers, Hershey Hawkins, as well as Sam Perkins. And of course, in addition to those teams, MJ played the Suns, who won 60 plus games, and the Jazz, who were a perennial 60 win team. The overall argument that Jordan didn't play tough finals competition has been debunked numerous times by myself and others. The larger point of this video is pretty simple. When it comes to someone like Kendrick Perkins, his arguments are paper thin, they're flimsy, and don't hold up under scrutiny. And like I showed you guys numerous times, he has tons of double standards comparing Jordan as well as LeBron James. So that right there is the end of the video. 
and Perkins once again is the buffoon of the NBA universe. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.